Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to discuss a very important topic which is called as bias and variance. And then we are also going to discuss about topics like overfitting, underfitting. I probably think you have heard a lot. And if I talk about just bias and variance, you have also heard about terminologies like high bias, low variance, low bias, high variance, like all these kind of terminologies we'll try to understand properly. And we are going to take both the example of regression and classification problem statement and we'll understand these terms. So let us take an example over here. I have a problem statement with respect to X and Y. These are my points. And our aim is actually to create a best fit line with the help of a linear regression. And there are various different kinds of linear regression like multiple linear regression, polynomial linear regression. Here specifically, I've used polynomial linear regression. Now, when my degree of polynomial is equal to one, that basically means this polynomial linear regression will just be acting like a simple linear regression. So it will try to create a best fit line. Now, based on this actual points, and you know that guys, linear regression is a problem. Uh, I mean, it is a model which will actually just create a best fit line. It is not suitable for, you know, the non-linear separated points or non-linear spread points, right? So over here, my point is actually spread in this particular shape, right? It, it is in the shape of a curve. But if I have degree of polynomial is equal to one, I'll just get a best fit line. Now, when I compute the R squared error, definitely the R squared error will be high. You know, it will be on the higher side because again, you understand this is my predicted point. This is my actual point that if I do the summation of all the errors, right, it will be usually high, right? Now, suppose if I increase the degree of polynomial is equal to two in the polynomial linear regression, what will happen is that now the best fit line will actually become a little bit smaller curve, right? It will be a little bit smaller curve. Now, in this scenario, you can see that it is actually satisfying most of the training points. And definitely the error is very, very less, right? The error is very, very less. Now, let us go one more step ahead. If I make the degree of polynomial is equal to four, now you can see that this is a condition where each and every point is exactly fitted to this particular curve line. Now, let us go back ahead to this particular thing only. When my error is very, very high, and I understand that we have created a model on a training data set, and for the training data set, it is giving a very high error. So this scenario, we basically call it as underfitting, right? Underfitting basically says that for whatever data I've trained my model, the error is quite high for that, right? I'm just not talking about my test data or the new data. This is just only with respect to the training data. Even for the training data, my error is very, very high. So this is basically an underfitting condition. Now let us go back to the last diagram over here. I probably think you, you know about this now, since each and every point is getting satisfied by this best fit line, right? Now, this is a scenario where I can say it has overfitting. I'll tell you why we are saying it as overfitting. Now, just understand guys, okay? Now, overfitting basically means what? Now, with respect to training data, this particular best fit line satisfies all the points perfectly, right? But just understand, if we have some new points, suppose my test points are over here, Suppose my new test points are over here. Suppose it is here, it is here, it is here, it is here, right? Now just understand, will this best fit line satisfy properly on the test data? Again, the error rate will be high. In overfitting condition, even though for the training data, the accuracy is quite high, but for the test data, the accuracy goes down. Okay, so what, what I'm saying for the training data, for the training data, I can write it as accuracy is very, very high, but for the test data, the accuracy is very, very, it's going down. In this scenario, what is happening? In this scenario, what is happening? In this scenario, uh, my accuracy of the training data, my accuracy of the training data, accuracy is going down, right? For the test data, also the accuracy is going down, right? Right, I hope you have understood this. In this case, the training data, the accuracy is very high, but for the test data, the accuracy is very low. Vice versa over here, for the training data also the accuracy is less, and for the test data also accuracy is less. So that scenario we call it as underfitting. This scenario we call it as overfitting. Our main aim should be in such that, for the training data also my accuracy should be high, and for the test data or for the new data also, my accuracy should be high. And that is actually solved by this particular degree of polynomial is equal to two. Now in this scenario, 
out of these three models you know i should be selecting this model in order to solve my problem statement now this is the most suitable model that we should select and in this particular model you can understand guys this particular model is you can say it as this particular model is basically giving us low bias low variance low bias and low variance now let's let's discuss about this what is bias and variance i've just told you about overfitting and underfitting but what about bias and variance now let's go over here in an underfitting scenario in the underfitting scenario i basically have i basically have high bias and high variance always remember these things guys for an underfitting i always have high bias and high variance bias basically means the error of the training data just consider think in this particular way okay the error of the training data variance basically says that it is the error of the test data okay so we have high bias and high variance obviously for the training data the error is high for the test data error is high that is what is the underfitting condition now let's go back to the overfitting in this scenario i will be saying that over here i have low bias and high variance why low bias understand for the training data the error is less right when the for the training data the error is less we basically denote it as bias since the error is less we call it as low bias but for the test data we are getting a huge error so we are calling it as high variance okay i hope you have understood so for this particular scenario we will be having low bias and low variance because for the training data also we are getting less error for the test data also we are getting less error pretty much simple i hope you have understood this i hope you have understood it much more perfectly if you have not just rewind it guys just rewind the video and try to understand in this also for the new test data also i'll be getting a high error for this also i'll be getting a higher error. right when i compare this this will be giving us a low error okay this was with respect to the regression problem statement now let us go to the classification problem statement now classification problem statement suppose i have used three models with three hyperparameter tuning techniques i have i have done some hyperparameter optimization for the first time my model one my training error was 1% okay classification problem statement basically means i'm trying to compare whether my model is able to do a binary classification like yes or no and usually you know that we use a confusion matrix for that right so over here suppose my model one gives a training error of 1% my model to model one gives a test error of 20 percent now just understand what kind of scenario this is one percent basically means low bias right test error is high so it will become high variance so in this scenario what is the scenario over here low bias and high variance if we have low bias and high variance what is the scenario this scenario is basically called as overfitting this scenario is basically called as overfitting right now let us go to the second model in the second model my training error is 25 percent my test error is 26 percent now in this scenario what do you think should be you know training error is given 25 percent again understand guys if your model is just 75 percent accurate i think you should try to improve that particular model yeah so it, it also depends on the domain that you are working but right now i'm considering that this is actually a underfitting problem what is underfitting problem high bias high variance since my training error is high i'll say it as high bias if my, since my test error is high, very high i'm going to say it as high variance okay now next thing is model 3 in model 3 what is happening my training error is less than 10 percent my test error is less than 10 percent now this is the scenario that we are covering over here which is nothing but low bias and low variance so this becomes an underfitting problem this becomes a most generalized model right so i hope you have understood these things now this is pretty much important to understand what i'm going to do guys i'm just going to rub this diagram okay and i'm going to show you a general representation of this bias and variance how it is shown in graphical order okay we'll try to understand that okay guys let us go ahead and try to understand the general representation of bias and variance i'll take the same example what i had actually taken over here in my x-axis is degree of polynomial over here in the y-axis it is error so understand if you have an underfitting condition what will happen usually the error rate will be high so error rate for the training data will also be high error rate for the 
test data will also be high right okay now let us go and try to understand this overfitting condition in the overfitting condition what will happen in the overfitting condition if i take this particular example over here or let me just uh, okay understand guys this red point is basically my training error this blue point is basically my cross validation error or you can also say it as test error okay so we'll just try to write in this particular way okay now for the overfitting condition you can you know that i have low bias and high variance so my training error for the training data i mean for the training data it will become less so suppose i am going to mention this particular point okay now with respect to this particular point you you can see that for the test data it is high variance so the error rate for the cross validation error will be high in the case of overfitting problem statement right when my degree of polynomial is high in this case my degree of polynomial is high so i am just going to keep this particular point like this let me combine this particular point like this okay so i have combined this particular training error like this it will go like this itself okay fine now about this particular point okay you will be able to see that you will be also able to see that this points will also reduce like this at at certain point and then after that it will again increase okay now this particular point that i was talking about it is nothing but high variance for the same degree okay high variance for the same degree because i told you oh, till till at certain point again your cross validation error will be reducing but after certain point you know since you are overfitting the problem statement it the accuracy sorry the accuracy or the error rate the error rate will actually be increasing so our aim is to actually find out a model you know where this generalized formation can come this generalized model can be created like based on the errors that we are getting over here and this scenario is nothing but low bias and low variance now in uh, from this particular graph you can see that this particular point is actually having low bias and low variance pretty much simple guys so i have hope you have understood this is the general representation of bias and variance let us go ahead and take some examples with respect to decision tree and random forest and then we'll try to understand whether it is an overfitting condition or underfitting condition now by default you know that guys decision tree creates disguised of trees itself right completely to its depth it takes all the features and then it starts splitting to its complete depth okay now when it does this this scenario is just like an overfitting condition okay this scenario is just like an overfitting condition now in overfitting you just split all the decision tree till its complete depth definitely for the training data this may give you a very good result okay the error rate will be less but for the test data guys this scenario will not work now this scenario this decision tree basically has a scenario of you know low bias low bias and high variance it has a scenario of low bias and high variance because understand because we are just training on the data on the training data itself and we have splitted it to its completely depth you know for the test data definitely this is not going to give a very good result you know so because of this we use techniques like decision pruning we try to only create the decision tree up till some depth you know after that depth we will not still split so that is the way of actually converting this high variance into low variance and again there are a lot of hyperparameter te te uh, techniques hyperparameter tuning techniques guys and definitely you should go and explore about decision tree regarding that now let us go ahead and take an example of random forest in random forest we use multiple decision tree in parallel okay multiple decision tree in parallel and when we consider random forest guys when we consider random forest since we are using multiple decision tree in parallel we basically have a scenario of something like low bias and since we are since we are using decision tree again i'm telling you initially it will have this kind of property of high variance low bias and high variance this will be the property with respect to each and every decision tree but since we are combining those decision tree in parallel because understanding random forest what is that it is basically called as bootstrap aggregation bootstrap aggregation in bootstrap aggregation what we do we take a data set we give it to multiple models okay we give we give this data set we give, we don't give the whole records but we give a partial some n number of records to different different decision trees okay and finally we get the output and we get aggregate it we aggregate it and then we see that who suppose um, many models are actually given a value as one then we'll consider that our output is one 
if many model gives us the output as zero we'll consider the output as zero now initially since i was using many decision trees and each and every decision tree has a property of low bias and high variance if i combine this in a parallel way this high variance will get converted to low variance okay how it is getting converted to high, from high variance to low variance since we are using this decision tree parallelly and remember this is my data set this is my model m1 m2 m3 m4 not all the data set is going right there are only some data set that will be going suppose uh, 20 record goes over here 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 suppose in my data set the total number of records are 80 so it will be splitted in this particular manner and then it will be trained on that particular model and the output will be given to us how you should understand that the high variance which was present in one single decision tree since we are combining all the decision tree in parallel it is getting converted into low variance so this was just one example with respect to decision tree and random forest one question is that what kind of technique xg boost have does it have high high bias and low variance or does it have low bias or low variance you, you can basically answer me that uh, please do comment down in the comment box of this particular video but i hope you have got the idea of bias and variance guys i hope you know now what is underfitting what is overfitting you know i hope you know that if somebody says low bias and high variance that is an overfitting scenario or underfitting scenario you should know that okay so yes this was all about this particular video please do let me know like if you have any other questions uh, and i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead thank you one and all bye bye